Archimedes famously quipped, give me a place to stand and I will move the earth. Well, as I like to do, I'm going to improve upon one of the great philosophers or mathematicians or whatever of all time. Um, I'm going to say, give me a place to stand and I'll move the cosmos. In fact, I might even abolish it, destroy it, or I won't even have to destroy it. I can demonstrate that it never existed. <laughs> nice. Um, that's if you give me a place to stand. I always like to debate people who seem to think that they know what the universe is and that they figured it out, or in some form or another they've gotten that idea into their heads. Um, you know, you start out debating people like priests. They tell you, well, the Bible is the absolute word of God or something along these lines, and if you accept that, then this flows from that. So, okay, well, that's a pretty big if, if I accept that. That's pretty easy. Um, but, you know, then I went to high school and I started to debate people like Marxists. I never really could handle Marxists. It's not even that I have anything against the theories of Karl Marx. It's just the people that tend to gravitate towards that sort of thing tend to be hate-filled fanatics. Um, <laughs> misanthropes who preach brotherly or siblingly love or whatever. The togetherness of the human race. Um, but are you disagree with them and they hate your friggin' guts and might actually advocate your own extermination? Certain hardline Marxists have advocated this. Kill people in the name of making the world a better place, of course. Um, then, of course, um, you run into people on the internet later on, uh, like race realists. <laughs> um, who, if you give them a place to stand, i.e., if you give them a coherent and consistent definition of intelligence, they take that and they then, quote unquote, demonstrate that people who belong to a race identified as Africans are not as intelligent as people who are identified as Europeans, who in turn are not as intelligent as people identified as Asians. Um, or at least they do better on IQ tests or whatever. Um, okay, well you've given somebody a seemingly harmless uh, axiom that you sort of think, okay, there's nothing wrong with this becoming a fact, that you know intelligence exists and that it's accessible as a concept, as a definable concept, measurable concept. What's the harm in that? <laughs> Put it in the hands of somebody like J. Philippe Rushton and watch what happens. Watch how harmful it could be. <laughs> uh, you know, you can almost hear the goose stepping in the background and the screaming voice and the thick Austrian accent. <clears throat> and now, of course, we're talking about logic, where one could demonstrate that our own existence is not logical. And it's a pretty compelling case that's been made. Now, of course, the problem is uh, there's an assumption built into that, or at least a, an assumption built into a conclusion based upon that. Therefore, we ought not to exist, because logically speaking, our existence cannot be justified. <laughs> um, okay. Again, that presupposes the need for justification. That presupposes the absoluteness of logic. Uh, that presupposes we have a place to stand. We don't have a place to stand. And the second we decide that we do, well, we know what happens. Now, I'm not saying that we must not pursue these things like intelligence or, I don't know, the class analysis of human society or, uh, uh, morality or logic. I'm not saying we shouldn't pursue these things because they're dangerous. No. What I'm saying is um, we should always remember what, we, what they are and why we created them. Logic is a concept. Concepts do not exist outside of the human mind. I uh, can't say this enough. Um, I don't know if People have the whole idea of concepts clear in their heads. 
Uh, it, honestly, it doesn't look that way to me. Um, you discuss, I mentioned communism, you discuss that with some people. And they will tell you that communism is the natural way of things. That anything other than that is an aberration. Have you ever heard of the theory of historical necessity? Uh, it's the theory that communism is so rational, so logical, so scientific, and so uh, ineluctable that it's just going to happen. Uh, no matter what we do, it has to happen. Um, if you talk uh, to, as I say, a race realist, he says, I'm not advocating we do anything about this. I'm just saying this is the way it is. It doesn't matter what we do. It's just the way it is. Well, maybe if we give you a place to stand. Now, axioms, um, concepts, etc. We generally use these things as though they are real, uh, but ultimately they're tools. One could even say that they're toys. You give a toy to a child, and the child gets utility out of that toy. The child uses it to its own advantage. When the child starts to beat itself or other children with said toy, you relieve that child of the toy. It cannot be trusted with even a harmless toy. Concepts are toys. Concepts are tools. Uh, concepts are a means to an end. Logic is a concept. Um, I'd love to delve into the fundamental, ultimate nature of concepts, if anyone's you know, willing to go down that rabbit hole. Um, you want to watch the universe dissolve get into that subject. And by the way, I'm going to stick to my contention that this <laughs> eradication of reality, or seeming, is not what I want. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole I'm following someone else down. <laughs> um, I once mentioned that uh, a certain rather unpleasant character on the net has abolished guilt because of his pushing it to an unsustainable extreme. It looks like logic rolls the dice is abolishing logic by the same uh, unintended uh, path. At a certain point, logic becomes untenable. There's no place to stand. Because what you do uh, by pushing it to that extent is you have to question or there are people who will question your place to stand because you're using that solid place against me. <laughs> uh, okay, I have no choice. <laughs> um, I have to question your place to stand, the, the very foundations of logic. I've got no choice. You boxed me in here. <laughs> uh, you forced me to point out to you uh, just how dicey our assumptions are, just how unreal concepts are. For convenience sake, we've, you know, 99.999% of the human race never even gets even close to this kind of thinking because it just doesn't interest them. <clears throat> but that, of course, leads to certain errors or certain misapprehensions, I suppose. We start to think that these things are real. We start to think that concepts, ideas, are actually real. They're not. <laughs> That's where they are. Um, not out there in the uh, phenomenal universe. Certainly not up there in the ether. If they are, so is God. 